Now that we know how to write net ionic equations for an insoluble substance, we're going to figure out how insoluble that insoluble substance is. And that's where KSP comes into play. KSP stands for the solubility product constant. And it pretty much is what it sounds like. It's the product of the solubilities of the aqueous ions that are dissolved in solution. Okay, let's try a number example five from your notes. Number five on your notes says, find the solubility in moles per liter of AGBr in water at 25 degrees. Now you might be looking at AGBr and realizing that it is an insoluble substance, and so here's its net ionic equation. AGBr solid turns into Ag plus aqueous plus Br minus aqueous, and notice that it is an equilibrium arrow, so it can go either direction. So AGBr is supposed to be a solid, it's supposed to be a precipitate, but maybe not all of it will precipitate. So KSP is going to tell us how much exactly of this AGBr will precipitate in water at 25 degrees. Okay, so what you have to remember about the K expression is that only gases and aqueous solutions are represented in the K expression. not solids or pure liquids. Only gases and aqueous solutions are represented in the K expression, not solids or pure liquids. So the K expression for this reaction would be KSP equals Ag plus times Br minus. And the AGBr solid would be completely ignored because it is a solid. So in the next step, when we set up the, nice, the ice box, just like you would with any equilibrium problem, we are going to completely ignore the AGBr solid. We're going to try to figure out how much Ag plus and Br minus are going to ionize or are going to dissolve from this precipitate. So now that we have this KXP expression, we're going to make an ice box for it. So we'll start with initially. And initially, there's some amount of AGBr solid, but since it's a solid, it doesn't actually matter. And initially, we're going to say that there is 0 Ag plus and 0 Br minus. The change comes along, and Ag plus is going to gain some amount x, which is the same for Br minus because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, whatever AGBr solid was initially didn't really matter, but you should know that it's going to lose the same amount x because of the one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one mole ratio. So uh, let's go ahead and put a question mark here for what AGBr solid started as, because it doesn't actually matter. What I know is that the same amount of AGBr that ionized is how much Ag plus is produced and how much Br minus is produced. So that at equilibrium, we have something minus x and x and x. So when we plug the numbers into the equation, we're just going to plug in x and x. <clears throat> now that we have these x's that we're going to plug into this equation, now all we have to do is solve. You're going to get the KSP value from the back of your notes or that reference chart that you have, and for AGBr the KSP is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 13, okay, and that'll be equal to x times x or if you prefer x squared. So I have to take the square root of both sides and I will get 6.93 times 10 to the negative 7 equals x, which means 6.93 times 10 to the negative 7 is the amount of Ag plus that's produced, the amount of Br minus that's produced, and it's also the amount of AGBr solid that went away or dissolved from whatever the original amount was. So the units for this 6.93 times 10 to the negative 7 are moles per liter. And since it's asking for the solubility in moles per liter, this is my final answer.
So the next part says, how many grams of AGBr will dissolve in one liter of water at 25 degrees? So remember, my final answer from before was 6.93 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. Now I'm looking for how many grams per liter. So this is a simple factor label problem. Converting moles to grams. Moles always gets the one. Grams always gets the periodic table. So you need to look up AGBR off the periodic table. AG is 107.9. BR is 79.9. Add those up. I have an 8, and a 1, and 7.8. 8, 1, 187.8. So 6.93 times 10 to the negative 7 times 187.8 grams is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4 grams. That's 0 0.00013 grams. Now, if you saw 0 0.00013 grams dissolve in a whole entire liter of water, would you call that insoluble? I would, but it is technically a little bit soluble, and that's what these problems are about. Okay, let's try number six. This one's skipping the moles per liter and going straight to how many grams of CaF2 will dissolve in one liter of water at 25 degrees. So the KSP expression is the same as we had before. KSP is equal to products over reactants raised to the power of their coefficients, except with a solid, you're going to completely ignore it. So we end up with Ca plus 2 times F minus. And since there's a 2 in front, that F minus will be squared. It would typically be over CaF2, but since CaF2 is a solid, then all we have to do is nothing, pretend like it's not there at all. So now that we have the KSP expression, we need to write an icebox. So our icebox will start initially. I have some amount of CaF2 solid, but it doesn't matter how much. I have 0 Ca plus 2 and 0 F minus. The change, well, CaF2 is going to lose X amount from whatever it started with. Ca plus 2 is going to gain that same X amount because of the 1 to 1 mole ratio. But notice that there's a 2 in front of the F minus. So the F minus is actually going to gain 2X. So that at equilibrium, we have X and 2X. So when we go to plug that into our equation, we will have an x here and a 2x there. So essentially we'll be using this 2 in front of the f twice, once for the 2x and once for the squared. All right, so just plug it in. Get the KSP number off the chart on your reference page and solve. So the KSP for CaF2 is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 10, and that will be equal to x times 2x quantity squared. 1.7 times 10 to the negative 10 equals x times 2x quantity squared. So let's simplify that. 2x quantity squared is the same thing as 4x squared times x. x times 4x squared is equal to 4x cubed. So 1.7 times 10 to the negative 10 equals 4x cubed. Next step is divide both sides by 4. That will cancel out the 4 on one side and we end up with 4.25 times 10 to the negative 11 equals x cubed. Next step is to take the cube root of both sides. There should be a button on your calculator that actually looks like a cube root or it may look like an x root. If you use if you have the x root button on your calculator, you'll type the number 4.25 times 10 to the negative 11, then this x root button and then a 3. Or if you have a, one of these cube root buttons, then you just type the 4.25 times 10 to the negative 11 then the cube root. Alright, so once you've done that, you have 3.5 times 10 to the negative 4 equals x. Now remember that x is the amount of Ca plus 2 that was formed. 
it's twice X is the amount of F minus that was formed, and X is the amount of CaF2 that actually dissolved in moles per liter. So X is equal to 3.5 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. And remember, that is equal to the amount of CaF2 that dissolved. It's the amount of Ca plus 2 ions that are present in the solution, and twice X is the amount of F ions that are in solution. But it's not asking for moles per liter, it's asking for grams. So I need to go one step further, change those moles into grams. So factor label so that the moles will cancel out. Moles always gets the 1. Grams always gets the periodic table. So Ca weighs 40.1. F2, that's 2 times 19. So we'll add that up and we get 78.1 grams. So when we multiply 3.5 times 10 to the negative 4 times 78.1 grams, I get 0 0.027 grams. It's the number of grams of CaF2 that will dissolve in one liter of water at 25 degrees. The next part of this question says, how many grams of CaF2 will dissolve in three liters of water at 25 degrees? So, if 0 0.027 grams will dissolve in one liter, and we have three liters, let's multiply one liter times three liters so that liters cancels out, and I end up with 0 0.082 grams to dissolve in three liters. All right, that's it for this video. Please try number seven and eight on your own first before you watch the next one.